Can you get sued if you try to defame a climate scientist, probably the climate scientist, the most popular climate scientist, by putting out a blog trying to say he's fraudulent or comparing him to a child molester? Apparently you can. And we're going to talk about it on today's episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. Let's start the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lewin. This is the podcast where you find out what's happening with the ocean, how you can speak up for the ocean, and what you can do to live for a better ocean by taking action. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about climate science and a specific climate scientist, Dr. Michael Mann, who is a professor or used to be a professor at the University of Pennsylvania. And he has sued or did sue. Rand Simberg, a policy analyst, and Mark Stein, a right-wing author, for online posts published over a decade ago by the Competitive Enterprise Institute and the National Review, respectively. So, here's the thing. Before we get to the case, let's talk about how a lot of right-winged, anti-climate... or anti-climate change, climate deniers, all these things, back a couple of decades ago, even further than that, were attacking everybody. You know, I, I remember seeing on TV commercials in Canada about the tar sands and how beautiful it was, and that's because the oil companies would make this beautiful this place even more beautiful. You know, they would look at the landscape of Alberta. They'd have shots of the landscape of Alberta. Beautiful landscapes because Alberta does have some wonderful landscapes and saying, look, there's nothing wrong here. Everything is fine. Don't worry about it. And it's be- and then at the end, you find out that it's, you know, paid for and sponsored by, you know, a Shell or some sort of gas company, oil and gas company. In the meantime, while that commercial was going on, there were satellite images that were showing you know waste ponds that would take like a hundred million dollars to clean up we would see fractured land and you know we would see studies of elk and caribou having trouble surviving all these like fragmented areas um you know just it was a terrible area this was the propaganda that the fossil fuel company had been spewing for decades confusing people trying to take what scientists said and turn it around, flip it around to make it look like nothing's ever happening. Now, Michael Mann, if you don't know who he is, he is the guy who made the famous climate science graph. It's the hockey stick graph, the graph that showed how much of a change in temperature had happened since the Industrial Revolution. You know that graph. Like if I'm a Canadian, I know what a hockey stick looks like. So if you lie a hockey stick down on its, on the ground and you put the blade up, You're going to get a flat, 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 flat stick, the shaft of the stick. And then on the blade, it goes up significantly, right? Probably curved, slightly curved or more curved, depending on what kind of hockey player you are. But that doesn't matter. It goes up. And in that graph, that graph showed everybody how much the temperature was going up, right? And it was made popular by former Vice President Al Gore when he's showing you know, the graph and showing how it went up and that made it everywhere. That just put it everywhere. People were like, okay, we have a problem here. What is happening? We need to fix this. This is ever since the industrial revolution. So when we started using fossil fuels to for energy, now all of a sudden we're, we have a, a huge problem. And, you know, at the time in the early 2000s, when this, this went around, it was crazy. Right. People were like, no, it didn't happen. Yes, it's not. It is happening. No, it's not happening. Yes, it is happening. There were ads about it. There were scientists that were losing their careers over it. It was just crazy. All these institutes came up, some of them making it look like they're scientific institutes, not scientific institutes. They're just marketing propaganda institutes trying to defunct. Right. And and just lay a smackdown on all the scientists that were coming out and being like, yes, we've been knowing, we know that we knew this for years. Now it's just made popular by a documentary and by, of course, Michael Mann. 
So, you know, Michael Mann had, had testified in front of the Senate and Congress and so forth. He's, he was, you know, publishing, you know, books and publishing papers, scientific papers on climate change, the damage that we were doing to our planet. Nobody was believing him in, in sort of the, the mainstream media and certain medias. And so uh, over a decade ago, I guess there was a policy analyst by the name of Rand Simberg. And uh, and Mark Sane, who's a right wing author, who did who made some online posts, sort of bringing him down. Uh, and so people are like, well, you know, how bad could it be? What what did they actually say? Uh, so the writers rejected man's findings. I'll put this this link from NPR into the uh, the show notes. Uh, it says in his online post, Stein said uh, he called man's work fraudulent and Simberg called Mann, Michael Mann, who formerly worked at Penn State. And if you don't know the popular thing at Penn State that happened over a decade ago for a number of years, a lot of years, there was a assistant coach by the name of Jerry Sandusky. He's, he's a former f- football coach. He was convicted of child sex, of child sex, convicted child sex offender, right? He brought in, I'm not even going to describe it. It was a huge, huge uh, scandal, and it just it would happen for a number of years. The head coach at the time was knew about it the whole apparently knew about it and just kind of hit it, you know, swept it under the rug. Huge, huge problem. And Jerry Sandusky is a by all means disgusting human being. So this Simberg called man who formerly worked at Penn State the Sandusky of climate change. In that, he said that he molested and tortured the data. That's how disgusting the comment was. Taking a child abuser and relating it to a climate scientist, or relating the climate scientist to a child abuser. Just imagine the gall of people to be like, we're going to take this guy who's just doing his job. He discovered something. And he's trying to make sure that people know about it because our planet is in trouble. We're going to equate him to the Sandusky, the child abuser of climate science. That is absolutely disgusting. So as he has the right, Michael Mann sued them. And he got, he won in some places and didn't win in the others. When it came to the damages against uh, the the first one, Stein, who called man's work fraudulent, the compensatory damages were just a dollar for each writer. Uh, so for, for each writer. But the punitive damage, so the compensatory damages were a dollar each. But the punitive damages were larger. So the jury ordered Simberg to pay man $1,000 in punitive damages. He's the one who called them fraudulent. And he ordered Stein to pay a million dollars for punitive damage. Oh, sorry, Simberg to pay a thousand for calling him a the the Sandusky of climate science. Only a thousand dollars. And ordered Stein to pay him a million dollars for calling him fraudulent in punitive damages. So although man didn't respond, he did say on on X or Twitter, I hope this verdict sends a message that falsely attacking climate scientists is not protected speech. And I think you know, when we, we talk about online speech, we talk about, you know, the, the freedom of speech. We just think we can say anything without consequences. And it's getting worse. And this shows it's getting worse. And so as is his right, Michael Mann was like, well, hold on a second here. None of it was fraudulent, even though you think it is. None of it was fraudulent. It's actually proven time and time again. And then the other comment was just absolutely disgusting. To defame somebody like that is is horrible and not true by any means. And unfortunately, some of the damages, you know, they were just saying it was kind of BS. So Simberg's attorney sent an email that cast the decision as a victory for him. And he said, uh, you know, we always said that man never suffered any actual injury from the statement at issue. And today, after 12 years, the jury awarded him $1 in compensatory damages. So they're focusing on the $1, not the $1 million that one of them had to pay. 
right? Like just, you know, you can't say anything. You will get, have to pay. But what is that to those, those authors? What is it to them to pay for that? So it's a win and a loss at the same time. And unfortunately, the man's trial comes at the time of increased attacks on climate scientists. This is saying, said by Lauren Car uh, Kurtz, who's the executive director of the Climate Science Legal Defense Fund, who notes that her fund helps more scientists each year than the year before. So they, she protects climate scientists from sp to speak out because what was happening is that they would get attacked. Their credibility would be destroyed. Their career would be destroyed. And for what? Just for telling the truth. And so... Uh, you know, some, somebody from the, uh, Kurt Davies from the Special Investigations of the Center of Climate Integrity, a climate accountability nonprofit, said, I don't think there's there's been anything like it. There's never been a case like this. You know, no one has ever taken climate denier, deniers to court like this. So although it wasn't huge damages, it does tell people that you can't just say anything. You can't just defame scientists that are showing the truth just by, you know, just by saying whatever you want. And you know, com you know, comparing them to a child molester. I mean, that's absolutely atrocious. So even though the ruling may not impact anonymous online attackers, the liability uh, verdict and the dollar figure in this judgment may deter more public figures from attacks on climate scientists. That includes politicians. That includes sort of like higher ups, like CEOs and so forth, right? It, it, it sends a message. The verdict sends a message that you just can't say anything. You have to come up with compelling evidence of some sort to be able to say something. But it is a controversial verdict because it's not a lot of damages. Now, maybe Michael Mann didn't suffer that much, right? Maybe he didn't in terms of his career. A lot of people support him, continue to support him, and support him back then. I don't know what he went through from you know, a psychological perspective. I have no idea. I, I don't know the man, unfortunately, and and I, I don't know what he went through. But it's something to be concerned about, right? When people are just saying, they're, you know, you look at how, what online is. I mean, look at X, like formerly Twitter, and you look at that, what that platform has become. You basically can say anything, show anything, especially now with, with on every platform with AI sort of generated content. You can make up anything. You can defame anybody, you know, and, and, and climate scientists and other ocean scientists who speak out about climate change and try and reduce climate change are a lot of times the victims. They get pressured, whether it be from famous figures, whether it be from higher ups or whether it be just from common people. Every time I post about climate change, I have a comment on my TikTok, I have a comment on my Instagram, I have a comment on Facebook, I have a comment on Twitter. Whether it's a true person or a bot, I have no idea. But it's somebody saying, climate change isn't real, this is all fake. Watch this YouTube video, it'll explain everything. <laughs> like, it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm glad Michael Mann got his, his, uh, his verdict. And, and, you know, he doesn't, I don't think he really cares in terms of what they said. Like I said, I don't know the man, I don't know what he went through. But at some point, you got to draw the line. And at some point, you got to protect other scientists who want to speak out. And I think that's what he did. I think that's what Michael Mann did through this lawsuit, is protect other people in the future from speaking or to, for spe to help them speak about climate change and help them reduce climate change without penalty of being harassed online. And that's, that's a big thing. I think that's a huge thing because a lot of people in science, although there's no incentive for people to speak out about science other than their own sort of morals and values to do something more than they want to, but there's no incentive from a job perspective. There's no incentive from a funding perspective. You just do your research and you en and and then you enjoy the results, whether they're what you expected or not, right? You're that's a scientist, but that's what happens, right? You, you get you can get you put out a paper, and then all of a sudden people come and attack you because it's attack a scientist day. And uh, Michael Mann stood up for scientists, and and I'm glad he did, and I'm glad he won, even though I don't think it was enough. I'm glad he won.
So I would love to know what you think of the verdict. Do you think it was it was controversial? Do you think it was something it was it was nothing to cry home about? Do you think it was something that's a win for scientists, or do you think it's a loss for science? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know on uh, on Instagram. Just DM me at how to protect the ocean. That's at how to protect the ocean. I would love to hear your thoughts on this uh, because it's just one of those things where I can see people going both ways. Yes, it is a win, but also no, it's not because they didn't get away with. They got away with it. You know, they probably paid a small price for what they can afford and they got away with it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, on this episode. And of course, you can always contact me, like I said, on Instagram at how to protect the ocean, or you can go to speakupforblue.com forward slash podcast. Oh, sorry. Speakupforblue.com forward slash contact to send me an email directly. I want to thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. I'm your host, Angelo, and have a great day. We'll talk to you next time and happy conservation.